Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Wish Do It, the Runway Watch. And as I have in the thumbnail, the question is, why buy this watch? Well, if you like how it looks, then, uh, you know, buy the watch. If you're looking for brand history, uh, legibility, specs, all that stuff, I mean, maybe this isn't the watch for you, but... Uh, if you like how it looks, if you like the look of Richard Mill watches, then, uh, you know, not a bad option for $349. It um, it does actually wear very comfortably on wrists, uh, despite the size. It's a large watch. Uh, it is very comfortable on wrists, so I will give it that. Uh, the strap is comfortable. It's, I would guess, FKM rubber. Um, you can buy replacement straps from the Wish Do It website for $79 or $69. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to the website and to this watch in particular. Uh, speaking of that, I did not pay for this watch. It was provided to me, so I will mark this as a paid promotion. Um, the case is PVD coated stainless steel. I don't know how they managed to do this graining pattern here. I'm not an expert at PVD. Um, you know, I would have thought it was be hydro dipped or something like that, but uh, the website does say that it's PVD coated. So it kind of has the carbon fiber look to it. Um, I've not really looked into Richard Mill watches all that much. Just what I see on YouTube videos. Uh, maybe I've been to the website, but I really have no idea how to buy one of their watches. And um, I'm not ever planning on buying one. I mean, they're, what do they start at? Like seventy, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. I mean, it's just not, not anything I'm going to uh, consider buying. Um, Unless I win the lottery, but even then, I don't think I would buy one. But anyway, let's get into the specs. We have a curved mineral crystal, a 316L stainless steel, which again is PVD coated black. I have another Wish Do It watch as well. I'll compare both of these in a future video. A mineral crystal on the back as well. It is a cool looking movement, uh, skeletonized. They implement, uh, I think, 30 different finishing techniques or processes to this watch. Um, it's brass components in here. And then uh, same on the front side here. You can see the mainspring there. Uh, you can see the balance down there. So it's a cool watch to look at and um, look at all the finishing techniques and, and the, the gears and the, the gadgets and gizmos, everything inside the watch. Uh, very neat. Um, as I kind of hinted at, not the most legible watch, but you can see we do have indices here. Um, I haven't looked at the loom uh, myself, but we'll look at it at the end of the video here. Um, you know, the hands aren't that easy to see. My eyes are always drawn to this kind of an X pattern in here. But it's still a cool watch. Uh, maybe you could call it a costume watch or something like that, but uh, it's very unique looking. Uh, compared to a typical watch, um, but again, it's, it's kind of a homage to Richard and Mill. Um, I don't know what kind of loom it has. I just wrote in my notes, uh, maybe it has loom, so we'll check that out. Automatic movement, 8 beats per second, and it does have 80 hour power reserve, um, which is very impressive. Your typical Seiko or your uh, 2824 movement, uh, that's about 40 hours of power reserve, 38 hours, so... Uh, this is the Seiko Field. Uh, I believe it's the SBSA113. This is the uh, JDM model. And then, compare it to my SKX, here it is over here. Give it a shake. So you can see, compared to the SKX, it is a large watch. It's, actually, it's thicker than the SKX as well. But as I said, it, it really does wear quite comfortably on wrist. I'm not sure how they do that, but does wear well. Oh, here, the thickness. I'll show you the thickness side by side. 13 and a half on the SKX and uh, 15 on the Wish Do It. Uh, Push-pull crown. Looks like a turbine or a, or a wheel. Very neat. So, push-pull is perfectly fine for me. You can just wind it on the fly. You don't need to unthread it and then wind it. And I believe it has... 50 meters, yep, 50 meters of water resistance, which is perfectly fine. So automatic movement uh, on that side. And it says wish do it there. And over here, what does it say? Water resistant.
So it is a fluorine rubber strap and it does have a black buckle and tang. Dimensions, it doesn't have lugs, but uh, from these extreme edges here, we can kind of see, you see daylight through there. That's just the gap between the case and the strap. You see that there as well. Uh, no big deal. But anyway, 50.5 millimeter from tip to tip here. 43.5 case width, 15 millimeter thick, and this strap does taper from 29 millimeter down to 20. The crown is really big at 11 millimeter, so I think probably the largest, yeah, it has to be the largest crown in my collection and perhaps the largest watch crown I've ever had in hand. And it weighs in at 130 grams. So let's get this on wrist and then we'll check out the loom. Actually, you know, let's just zoom in. Give you a little bit closer look at the finishing and the movement here. I really do enjoy looking at mechanical movements. Uh, we do have a, I guess that would be a chapter ring or re hot around here. It's red, of course, and then it says wish do it up there. And then you can see the skeletonized movement. Everything is skeletonized in here. So there's the balance wheel just spinning around. And I don't know if I can see. Move the rotor there. Yeah, you can see that guy spinning there. When I wind the movement and the gear next to it. I don't know if I've been able to see the spring in there or not. But anyway, just cool to see stuff moving around in there. Okay, let's zoom out and get it on rest. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it and it really does help me out. Let me know in the comment section if you would purchase one of these watches or what your thoughts are on the styling in general. I was first aware of Richard Mill and then uh, a while after that I, re I found out somehow that Hublot has a watch, a very similar kind of style. I don't know if Hublot was first or Richard Mill. Like I said, I'm not really into the brand uh, that much, so. Don't know that much about them. I do know they, I think they have the thinnest mechanical watch now. So they definitely uh, know how to manufacture watches. They, they use uh, very unique materials, uh, space age technology, whatever you want to say. But, uh, you know, that's a lot of talk about Richard Mill, and then uh, this watch here is the Wish Do It. But that's what I think about when I see this watch. So, yeah, it's just, you know, it's thick, but it <laughs> wears well. I don't know how it does it. And uh, there's uh, no gap here. So maybe it's just because I have a, a, a flat wrist, and the back of this is flat, and it just kind of curves down right at the right spot. I can bend my arm enough for you to see that or not, but anyway. All right, let's pause the video and we'll take a look at the loom. Well, that's kind of cool, but also it kind of adds to the, uh, I'll call it visual confusion with the handset here. The X pattern there is loomed as well, but it kind of interferes with the handset. But you know, with this watch, I don't think you're really buying it to tell time uh, quickly. Um, you can see the loom pips are loomed. I can see it on, on the screen here, but by eye, it's really hard for me to see those loom pips. Uh, SKX is just uh, blowing it out of the water. Let me center that. So, oh, uh, let me show you. So that, that's the loom there. It's, you know, it's about what you can expect, but let me hit it with the UV light. There's some cool stuff uh, with the UV light, that red ring. Um, we'll call it a ring, chapter ring, it shows up and then inside the, well, my fingers and the UV light, anyway, inside the balance wheel and the um, mainspring, there's those little red dots. I'm not sure what that is. But uh, anyway, cool watch, uh, fun watch. Buy it if you like how it looks. Uh, maybe not for the brand history and all the other stuff, but anyway, that will conclude this video. As always, Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.